With Heart Rhythm TV from Denver, Colorado, I am Dan Alyesh, and this is the Ice Image of the Month. Back by popular request, we are joined by Dr. Mansoor Razminia of, of Ascension Health in Elgin, Illinois. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Daniel. This episode is going to focus on ice and imaging of, for atrial thrombus in the context of atrial arrhythmias. A, a very interesting and novel application for pre-ablation, pre-cardioversion. Um, so this episode is going to be split into two parts, okay? The first part of it is going to focus on a summary of the data because it is an evidence-based practice. Then we will dive into imaging for atrial thrombus from the RVOT and then the main pulmonary artery. Following this, part two will focus on imaging for atrial thrombus from the coronary sinus with ice. So sure. without further ado, I'm going to progress to our first slide and Dr. Razminia, please make sure to look at this one very closely because it is of importance for setting the stage for our, our episode. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I did this get in here. Who's in charge of these slides? Wait, that's me. <laughs> um, you know, I almost wanted to call it the return of the ice daddy, but the return of the king <laughs> of the ice king seems appropriate. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all right. So all shenanigans aside, we'll jump into the episode now. Okay. And, and this is actually the one year anniversary of Ice Image of the Month. So it was very appropriate to, to call it the return of the ice king. And thank you again for joining. Oh, us. thank you so much. Uh, this is an honor to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. So this is... Um, so this is the summary slide of the data. Um, and these are a few of the seminal studies. There are more. But uh, you know, originally in 2010, Sanjeev Saxena did ice imaging in comparison to TEE for pre-cardioversion. And his study originally published in Circuit P demonstrated uh, actually a reasonably good sensitivity, but lower sensitivity for ice. Okay. Following this, another study in Circuit P as well, out of Poland, Barron et al did a study of ice as applied to pre-ablation, okay? And what they did was they took it to the next level, imaging from the RVOT, main pulmonary artery, as well as coronary sinus, uh, to varying degrees. And they found similar sensitivity and specificity. And then in 2014, in heart rhythm, a lot Anter and colleagues did, did a similar study, imaging from those vantage points, and found actually superiority of ice to TE pre-ablation. So, Setting the stage here for this is an evidence-based practice, and now we're going to walk. We're going to jump into the details of how it's done. First question for you, Dr. Resmenia: Are you doing this for all of your cases? I do um, almost in all of my cases. Probably for the past many, many, many years, maybe I have done one or two TEEs, and those are the ones that I have a pre procedural, you know. I'm suspecting that there could be a thrombus. Let's say, make sure that you know the patient has never had any, you know, uh, TEE in the past and had never, you know, newly it's you know, a diagnosis of AFib has not been on anticoagulation. So you know that you're suspecting that there is a high chance of thrombus there. That's why I don't want to go ahead and, you know, put uh, you know the patient under general anesthesia, place catheters in, and go ahead and put the ice up, and find out that there is a thrombus. So because of that those very rare occasions, which is maybe one every two, three years, I would do one TEE. Other than okay. that, uh, I always do the TEE, right? The first catheter, I, I, I'm sorry, I always put the ice first, the first catheter, and I rule out left atrial appendage thrombus that way. Well, thank you very much. And in my case, you know, I'm doing it in people that come in on DOAX without missed doses and sinus rhythm, but I don't necessarily have the guts to do it with uh, AFib, but maybe I need to push the envelope with my practice to mirror yours. So very rarely um, you see, very rarely you see really, if they are on, you know, anticoagulation, even though they have, you know, missed one or two doses, if you, you know, if, because to be honest with you, I mean, it is extremely, extremely rare that I have canceled the procedure because I saw a thrombus. If I had a, <clears throat> I had a, there was a low possibility that the patient may have a thrombus and I go in and I see a thrombus. So maybe two or three cases in the past decades I, I, I have canceled. Re the rest of them, you just see that very nicely, you rule it out and you proceed with your procedure. 
Okay, well, let's move on to our first image here. Now, this is imaging from the RVOT, which we are more familiar with. So can you describe for the audience, I'm going to play the image here, um, kind of what you're, what we're seeing, your catheter manipulation, almost like a narration for this video. Sure. So here we are going to visualize the left atrial appendage from the right ventricular outflow track. So first we have to advance the ice into the right ventricle. How do we do that? We go ahead and place the ice through the tricuspid valve. So remember the, you know, we do the anterior tilt. It is like, I call the tricuspid valve like a French door. So you want to go from room number one, which is the atrium through the French door to the room number two. So we go to the room number two. Now we are going to perform a, release the anterior tilt. We are going to perform clockwise rotation. We are going to see the left ventricle. If I continue performing further clockwise rotation, I'm going to see the left, H, uh, left uh, atrium and left atrial appendage. If you notice here, actually in this view, I have a very good left atrial appendage view. I can see it very clearly because maybe I'm very a little bit close to the pulmonary uh, valve. But here, if you notice, majority of time when I'm doing it from the RVOT, that is the distance from my ice catheter to the left atrial appendage. So look at that distance, which is main part of it is the left ventricle. And you can see that area is good. The sound wave are going to come and get deflected back. So it's not going to penetrate inside the left atrial appendage. And that is why I really may miss a left atrial appendage thrombus. Because of that, I really recommend if someone wants to do it, uh, definitely 100% you got to go ahead and place it inside the main pulmonary artery to be able to do it. Sometimes, very rarely, you can get a very good view, but still, when you put it in the when you put it in the main pulmonary artery, you are a few millimeter away from the left atrial appendage, as opposed to five six centimeter away from the left atrial appendage. When you are in the RVOT. Oh, no, uh, wonderful summary. I think getting the catheter into the RVOT something that's very familiar for people that say a blade VT, a blade PVCs. Um, now, the next step will be, and the next level, in my opinion, is to go out the main pulmonary artery. Now, I'm going to jump to our next slide here, but I'd like you to focus, if you can, Dr. Rizmini, on catheter manipulation, getting it out there, because in my experience, there was a bit of a learning curve to get to make that turn out the main pulmonary artery. Your images are fantastic, and your narration will be very helpful. So let me get it started sure. here. Thank you. So now we are going to visualize this uh, left atrial appendage again, this time from the pulmonary artery. So again, the same thing. We are going to go room number one, French door, which is a tricuspid valve. We go to the room number two. We are going to go to the right ventricle. We are going to perform clockwise rotation. Uh, of course, we always remove the anterior tilt. <coughs> Excuse me. We perform clockwise rotation. We are going to see the left ventricle. Now, after that, we are going to perform a little bit further clockwise rotation, and this is a view of the left atrial appendage from the RVOT. Now, remember that now the pulmonary valve is another French door. So it is as if you are going from room number three to the French door to room number four, which is right there, pulmonary artery. So you have to dive into the, so you have to see at every moment, you have to see the room number three, the French door, room number four, which is the pulmonary artery, main pulmonary artery. We are focusing on the main pulmonary artery. So you want to, when you are diving down, you want to make sure that at every moment you see this three structure, RVOT, French door, which is the pulmonary valve, and pulmonary artery. And as you are performing anterior tilt, you're going to make this French door and the pulmonary artery become horizontal right there. So you see at every moment, I can see that three structures, RVOT, the French door, which is here, the pulmonary valve, and the pulmonary artery. And then when you are in the pulmonary artery, you would be able to counterclock it and be able to see the left atrial appendage. Here you can appreciate the left atrial appendage, that is the ridge, and that is the left superior pulmonary vein on the right hand side. And then here again, you can see the mapping catheter in the left atrial appendage right there. You can see the, you know, by doing a little bit clockwise, counterclockwise, very minimal movement. I'm talking about one millimeter movement at a time to be able to see this appendage, to be able to see the apex of the 
appendage. And th let's take a look at this view, if, if, you, if you may pause it, if you don't mind. You see how, how close we are to the left atrial appendage. There is no tissue between my eye scatter, which is the dot on the top, and the left atrial appendage. So there is no blockage of the sound waves going. So I directly looking at the appendage like through very close to the, uh, from the pulmonary artery. That is where you are gonna be, be very comfortable to mention what, that the patient has no left atrial appendage thrombus. And, and uh, you know, Dr. Razmini, I, I think you put it very clearly, micro movements. I find that, you know, you're, you're clocking, you're advancing, you're, you're anterior tilting just subtly and slowly while keeping those structures in view. You wanna advance into an echo free space. And that's something that I think takes a little time to realize as you keep going. Like so I'll, driving I'll, uh, a car, exactly. So it takes time, but ultimately, you know, you're gonna just go, you don't think about anything, you know, you just go. Sometimes you drive for 10 minutes and you realize, oh, where was it? What was I doing during that 10 minutes? Because you were thinking of something else. So it becomes so routine, but you just really need to know the structure. Again, just remember that all the time you have to see that room, then the door, then the second room. So you always want to see them. And this is the room number four right there that you were showing, which is the pulmonary artery. So you, when you are going through anything, like the same thing with from atrium to the ventricle, the same thing. You want to see that going to the, so this is the same maneuver basically. Even though anatomically you are going up, but you don't care about anatomic, don't think about it that way. Think about it as how ice is looking. Ice is showing you that you have to go dive. And how do you dive? You perform anterior tilt. And by a little bit clock and counter, make sure those three structure, RVOT, pulmonary valve, which is the French door, and the pulmonary artery, you always see them in view. If you don't see them, all three of them, you never advance. It's very important. Absolutely. And always make sure there's an echo-free space. And if you have the, exactly. the three rooms in place, you will have echo-free space. So back to your image here. Um, we're now yeah, discussing... This is, yeah, this is a case of mine that I'm in the RBOT. You can appreciate the left atrial appendage. So if I want to look at the left atrial appendage, I don't see anything obvious. So I say that, let me proceed with the ablation. But again, I always see this, but at the same time, you're going to perform a little bit further clockwise rotation. And we are going to see again right now the RBOT, pulmonary valve, and the pulmonary artery. So I'm in the pulmonary, in main pulmonary artery, and this time I counterclock it and look what I see here. This is a very same patient that actually this patient I had to cancel the procedure. This is one of the rare patients that I really thought probably there is nothing. And God forbid, you know, if I had gone and tried to rule it out from the, uh, you know try to rule it out from RVOT, we may have had a disaster, you know, but now we go to the pulmonary artery and we see there is a thrombus. This is another patient that I put it in the pulmonary artery, the catheter, and this patient was in three years of warfarin, never being cardioverted. It was a permanent AFib, but she was very symptomatic. So I placed the eyes and look at that one. You can see, lo lo and behold, that huge left atrial appendage thrombus which you can see it very nicely. This is probably, you won't miss it from the RVOT either. But again, you just want to be getting used to placing it all the time, 100% of time. If you are going to go that way, not from the CS or any other way, you're going to go through the RV, you go to RVOT, and then you go to pulmonary artery. This is a way that you want to rule out left atrial appendage traumas, not any other ways. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Dr. Rizmedia. Um, HRS TV viewers, don't touch that mouse. We're gonna we're gonna uh, conclude this episode. Thank you very much for joining My us. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate that. Stay tuned for part two, and thank you for tuning in to the Ice Image of the Month. Thank you.